We saw in the last movie how layouts allow us to have HTML and Ruby code that can be reused as the wrapper around each of our view templates. In this movie, we'll look at partial templates, frequently just referred to as partials, which allow us to create reusable fragments and to not repeat ourselves as much as possible. Let's begin by taking a look at the new and edit templates that we created in the last chapter on CRUD. So first we'll start out with the new template. You see that I've got some code that takes place up here above the form. Then I've got the form 4 which has the action create. I've got three form fields, name, position, and visible. And then I've got the submit tag which is create subject. You'll remember that when we created the edit form we actually did it by duplicating the new form because the two are so similar. They're not the same because we have edit subject up here, the form action is update, the button down here says update subject, but everything that's here inside the form the form fields which allow us to work with our subjects, all of that is exactly the same between the two of them. We're repeating ourselves here. And if we make a change to a field on one form, chances are we want to make that same change to the other form. And we have to now remember to make that change in both places. And there's an increased chance that we'll introduce bugs into our code if we forget. This is exactly the kind of thing that being dry, or don't repeat yourself, is supposed to prevent from happening. The solution to this problem is to use a partial. And the way we create a partial is we create a new file. I'll do that right here using this button. And the name of the partial is always going to begin with an underscore. That's how we know right away this is not meant to be a full template. It's a partial template. And then we can call it whatever we want. So I'm going to call this one just form.html.erb. That's a common convention when we're just dealing with basic CRUD. It's to just call it form. But you can have partials with any name you want. So underscore form.html.erb. So we'll create it. And what we'll do is we'll just jump back over here to edit, and I will cut all of that text out of there. We're going to take it and drop it right here into our form. So now I have a partial that's ready to be called. Notice one other thing, though. This partial depends on knowing a variable, f. f is the name of the local variable that this partial needs to be able to find the name, position, and visible. So we need to make sure that we set a value for that. The way we call the partial is by using render. Render is not just something that we use in the controller. We can also render a partial, and then guess what? We put in the name of the partial, but without the underscore. So the convention is to name it with the underscore so it's clear it's a partial, but Rails knows it's a partial because we told it right here it's a partial. We don't have to tell it the underscore. It can guess that that's what it is. So render the partial form, and we need to make sure that we have the values. So locals, the local variables that we're going to need are f, and f is going to be equal to f right here, the local value here. So that's it. We're just going to say the local value f in the partial should be equal to the same f that we're using in this form here. So let's try that out. We'll go into our terminal. I'm already in the root of my application, Rails server. There we go. We'll open up Firefox. We'll go to localhost 3000 subjects. That will bring up our subjects. And now let's click edit. So the exact same form is being used when we call that edit action. So let's switch over now. Let's just copy that render right there. And then let's switch over to new. And we can take all of this and replace it with rendering the form. So there we are. Now new does the same thing. Let's click back to list, add a new subject. There we go. So just like that, we've allowed ourselves to have this reusable snippet of code, the form that's going to be used between new and edit. Now don't go crazy with partials. Not everything has to be a partial just because it's reused. But in cases like this, where we have a big section of code that's absolutely identical, and where we definitely want it to function in the same way in two different cases, then a partial is perfectly appropriate. Now when we render a partial and we just say partial form, it's going to assume that form is in the same folder as where this template is. If we want to render a partial that's in a different folder, it's absolutely possible. We just have to pass in the full path starting with views. So for example, if we wanted to render a partial that was in the demo folder, we would do demo slash form. And then it would go to look inside demo for something called form. It's also become a very common practice to create another folder called shared that you use for any kind of partials that are shared between different controllers. So you would just inside views, create a new folder called shared, and that's where you would drop in any partials and we would use them there. Again, that's only if you need to share it between controllers. If there was a partial that both subjects and pages needed, then we can put it there. We don't have anything like that, but I'll go ahead and leave the shared folder there just as a reminder. Now on your own, I'd like you to try to create these same form partials for the pages and sections templates that you created earlier.